Welcome back. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people, eagle-eyed viewers. This is, in fact, Shadow down here in this uh, this little bed. He assures me he fits. It's really made for kittens, that part of the tree. He assures me he fits. If 30% of his body's in there, he fits. All right, so we're going to talk about some news of the day for all you fine people, starting off with NHL 23. Yes, NHL 23 revealing its cover athletes, and a lot of people seem to dislike both choices. Trevor Zegers is an exciting player, and apparently you'll be able to do the Michigan goal in the new NHL game, so putting Zegers on the cover makes some sense from that, from that standpoint. Also, Sarah Nurse becomes the first woman on the cover of an NHL game. It looks like they'll be adding women's hockey to it on some level, and whether you have a full league, however you run it, there have been women in the game for quite some time. Uh, I remember it was Angela Ruggiero uh, that was in there and Haley Wickenheiser. And I'm thinking way back, way, way back, way back. But yeah, that was the first time that I can remember. And so, yeah, uh, tomorrow they'll reveal the actual cover. I think it's weird to reveal the cover athletes posing next to each other. And then they're going to show us the actual cover tomorrow. But... Um, I, I just hope the game is good. My issue with the NHL games has become they're skippable. Uh, basically, you've got a game every year that's essentially the same as the one the year before. They just put a fresh skin over it. So it's just, it's it's like, it'd be like getting a new Sims game every year, but you're just getting new clothes for your Sim. The game doesn't actually change. So you might have new wallpaper, you might have new clothes, but the gameplay is exactly the same. And that's, that's been a problem the NHL had first on the PS3 and then the PS4, and apparently it's going to carry over. So um, at any rate, hopefully the game's good. Hopefully the cover doesn't make too many people angry. And again, it, it really is just about its its popularity more than anything, because I've seen a lot of people saying, why isn't Makar on the cover? Hey, I think the Heart winner should be on the cover every year, but that's just me. Um, anyways, uh, that would be, of course, something that, from year to year, people might get mad at, especially if it's the same guy on the cover all the time. But, all right, that's a whole other discussion of who should be on the cover of NHL 23. And I, I don't think they necessarily care what my opinion might be on said matter. So we'll go ahead and move along. Uh, Fanatics. So yesterday, uh, Fanatics, it, this is what happens. So they, they get the product and they take the pictures and they have the listings and sometimes those listings are publicly findable before they're supposed to be. So what happened yesterday is there's a bunch of t-shirts that show the logos they're going to be using for the upcoming reverse retros. It might be secondary logos, but it's clear that this, the reverse retro is close. I'm honestly surprised they haven't already revealed the reverse retros. Uh, we've already seen a bunch of leaks. We know that Fanatics has the product. We know that it's releasing at retail in a few weeks. I'm really surprised they haven't done the full-on reveal. And I'm, I'm wondering what the holdup is because you would think they would have done it already. At least, I think they would have done it already and I'm very surprised they haven't. But at the very least, it showed Minnesota's doing North Stars colors. Florida, you know, that secondary with the palm tree, that's the primary. The Oilers are doing the McFarlane throwback with the oil drop, the gear. Uh, the drop in the middle looks like that's going to be orange. The Flames, it looks like Blasty is going to be the third jersey. And so they're they're getting a third that's Blasty. And the reverse retro, it looks like it's a throwback, but it's a white C with the yellow. And I don't know, it's going to be kind of fun to see. And of course, we've had the leaks of New Jersey, of Vancouver. And all I keep thinking is, you know, the NHL could prevent this by just doing the full-on reveal like they did the last time around with the reverse retros. It doesn't feel like it took this long or we had this many in terms of leaks before it came out. But we'll see what else happens from here, right? Uh, a lot of fun stuff you can do with jerseys, and I can't wait for the disappointment people feel when the actual jerseys are revealed. That's, that's part of the fun. It's not just, you know, that three or four that we all look at and go, those are fantastic. It's those ones that people look at and go, did they not know the assignment? And for Islander fans, don't worry. The Fisherman is essentially, it's it's back. It's going to be the reverse retro. We all know this. We'll see what the record is like when they wear the Fisherman jersey. Worst case scenario for Lil Amarillo, they're undefeated wearing the wearing the Fisherman. And um, then he can grumble his way around if, if, you know, somebody in the organization says, you know, they sell really well and we have a good record wearing them. 
then you kind of have to bring it back. Again, some of the reverse retros I did expect at the time would end up being thirds. Calgary using the Blasty one, and apparently it's exactly the same as the reverse retro. I don't think they're going to be the only one. I find it weird that these jerseys sell out and they go, well, that's it. And I understand that, you know, there were there were issues with manufacturing and all that. But now that some of the manufacturing delays should be gone, some of those, they'd have to make us thirds. Teams are essentially saying, we'd rather not make the money off those jerseys, which is weird, right? It's the, the weird thing. All right. Next up, the World Cup. Uh, so the NHL has some grand plans. Now, they're doing a tour right now. They're, they've got a bunch of players over in Paris, and they're doing this big press tour in Europe. And so part of what they're revealing now is the next World Cup is expected to be in 2024. Uh, the plan, according to, uh, John Daly, uh, to yeah, John Daly, is that we're going to... Bill Daly. I'm like, John Daly's the golfer. Bill Daly's the vice president. Bill Daly, according to Bill, da John Daly doesn't care. He's out golfing somewhere. Uh, Bill Daly, on the other hand, he does. And the vision is that during the preliminary round, one of the pools would be in Europe. So you'd have basically one grouping over here in North America, one grouping in Europe. And then for the semifinal and the final, they actually want that to be dedicated to a North American city, which may not be hosting the other um, round robin preliminary games. This is very ambitious be very interesting to see how long this takes. This, of course, would likely replace the All-Star break because this is at least what's been rumored and what's spilled out is that it would happen during the usual All-Star break time, so in February. Uh, if if it's going to be half in Europe, half over here, it, it's going to take a while. I would say at least a two-week tournament, right? So it's ambitious. It is something I've talked about. If you're going to call it a World Cup, you can't just have the tournament in Edmonton. You can't just have it like in Vancouver and Toronto. You kind of have to have it in Europe and in North, North America. My other issue would be you kind of have to have just countries. Uh, the understanding that I've, I've heard, though, is that Team Europe... And Team North America will not be a thing this time around because it didn't make a whole lot of sense then. As fun as it was to make sure you get Anze Kopitar in there because you can't just have Team Slovenia and go, it's Anze against everybody. So good luck, Anze. Uh, we put goalie pads on you. That's got to help. But yeah, so uh, we'll see how it all turns out and which countries are in and, and how many countries end up with. I would think it has to be 10 countries to make this work if you're going to have a pool on one side of the ocean and a pool on the other. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it works out. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about the salary cap briefly. And, and Bill Daly, again, just John Daly doesn't care. Bill Daly basically backing up what's been said that after the 2024-2025 season, the expectation is the salary cap will jump. So hearing this specifically from the National Hockey League is good. And so over the next couple of years, we're going to keep seeing teams over the cap using LTIR to get under the cap. Roughly half the league is in that situation right now. Uh, odds are it'll be at least half the league again for the next two years. And then we should start seeing that relief. Now, the salary cap will likely go up a million dollars next year and a million dollars the year after. And then it's after that that the salary cap should take quite the jump. Uh, we should see that all the money that's been been held should all be paid back and everybody should be happy. And that's the key thing because then you have another CBA coming up not too long after that. So they're going to want to make sure everybody's nice and happy so that you can just fly through the CBA, not have a work stoppage and just keep making that money, right? Okay, now one player who will not be making a ton of money this year in North America or any is Alexander Texier. Uh, Texier letting the Columbus Blue Jackets know he's going through some personal things. Uh, he's gone through the NHL slash NHLPA substance abuse and behave behavioral health program, which tells me this might be a depression thing too. Uh, but he is taking a year. Uh, rumor has it, according to Daily Faceoff, he's set to sign with a Swiss team and play in Switzerland this year. But his, his heart just isn't in it. So we don't know why exactly yet. Uh, but he has decided for his own mental health, he and, and just in general, his own health and well-being, he's going to stay home. He's going to stay in Europe. Uh, he is from France. And so being in Switzerland, a lot closer than being in Columbus is to his home. And so, yeah, uh, hopefully 
everything works out for him and he's able to come back to North America after a year off. Um, one alarming thing that I've, I've noticed online is that when somebody admits they need help and they go through something like this, and whether it's for depression or whether it's for substance abuse, people online are just awful. And I know people in my life who've gone through depression issues and substance abuse issues. And if, if they'd been treated in the workplace or if they'd been treated amongst the family the way that people online talk about guys that go through this kind of thing, that's just awful. I just can't imagine. So uh, best wishes to Alexander Texier. Hopefully whatever he needs to do, he gets done and then he can come back over and resume his career afterwards. Uh, I like Texier. I, I think that the offense is still there. I We haven't seen it at the NHL level. I was actually kind of looking forward to seeing, you know, with the additions that have been made by Columbus and the changes and expectations if Texier might get swept up and maybe get some more points than we expect. But that's pushed, pushed back for a year. Now, what this also means is Columbus doesn't have to pay him this year. So he's able to sign in Europe. His contract, I, I believe this is where they just tack on a year. They basically just take the year that would have been this year for his contract, push it to next year, and then he'd come over and play for the pay that he would have got this year. But he is, as I said, expected to sign in the Swiss League. So we'll see how this turns out and if anything else is said and if there's any other developments with this. I will be here to report on it when it does happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.